Welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Today's review, we're gonna be looking at Vallejo's brand new metal color paints. Now, we've been down this road before, we've seen it multiple times, especially recently, brand new paints coming out and things like that, especially metal colors. To be honest, we've been looking at AK's one. We found a few faults, but apparently that is a production problem, so we're gonna be going back and retesting that one. But the trouble with all these ones that we've been using recently is, is that they're all either enamel or a lacquer-based uh, paint. Now, as you know, I do like my acrylics. Um, the reason I like acrylics is obviously from a health point of view, spraying them every day like I do, but also it's just the, the lack of smell and everything else like that. It just makes them nicer to work with. So if somebody would come along with a good acrylic, then I would be absolutely happy. And I've been calling it a unicorn paint for some time now because nobody has actually come up with a good metallic effect, okay, that is easily airbrushed straight down with minimal fuss uh, and it goes down and gives a great result just like we've seen with AK stuff and with sort of, you know, the Mr. Metal colors and things like that. So anyway, I was quite surprised because I didn't know it's actually coming out, but Vallejo have thrown us out these guys. Now this is their little pamphlet, which I've got loads of them here. Um, now I haven't got all the colors, uh, I've just got what I would use if I'm honest. But basically just skimming through this one, um, obviously you've got your multiple language, it basically says that this stuff is neat, shake it well, if you spray direct from the bottle, it can be thinned. Uh, and then afterwards you can get some glosses. So to be honest, I've got one of their gloss varnishes here, which is specifically designed to resist any type of weathering over the top be it from whatever but enamels uh, things like that and turpentine washes it's supposed to be fine afterwards it's also supposed to be good with uh, masking over which is one thing we've struggled with uh, as we've met our way along but basically as you can see it's all very nice and you do get the wide mouth top on it so you can tip back into it if needed and things like that the colors that they actually do as you can see down here, so we've got your sort of standard aluminiums, you've got your Dural aluminium, uh, okay, you've got your dark aluminium, a pale burnt uh, metal, a white aluminium, okay, and then you've got a chrome, a copper, magnesium, steel, jet exhaust, it keeps going. Um, and then we've actually got down here, where did we get to, uh, jet exhaust. Um, then we've got a semi-matte aluminium, which is a bit of a funny one, a dull aluminium, gunmetal gray, a burnt iron, uh, exhaust manifold, uh, a silver, a gold. Uh, then we've got obviously the gloss, which we've got down here, and a black primer. Okay, now I don't think I got the black primer because I didn't see the point of that one. Okay, but what I have got down here, I've actually got the uh, Dura uh, aluminium, the magnesium, dull aluminium, steel, dark aluminium, normal aluminium, jet exhaust, chrome, and then I've actually got the varnish as well, just to give me roughly the colors I would use on a day-to-day -day basis, and it puts me on par with my range that I've also got at the moment, okay? So what I thought we would do is we'd start off quite simple test of actually spraying this stuff. How does it spray? How easy does it mix? And all the other bits and pieces. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna use the aluminium color because this is my sort of base color and I tend to use other people's. Now I have had a quick go of this with Buster already. Okay, but we're gonna start afresh if you like with it, okay? So we just move those out of the way. So usual thing with all your, your metalizer type paints, you're gonna get quite a heavy pigment. You can probably see laying down at the bottom just like this, which we're gonna need to take care of. So we're just gonna give it a good old mix up. Okay, and making sure you get all of this off the bottom, okay? And with acrylics, it's even more. It tends to be a thicker, heavier pigment with acrylic paints versus, as we've seen with um, other people's, you know, normally the lacquer base ones. So you wanna make sure you can get bubbles, and you might be able to see, we've got bubbles appearing down here now, but we want bubbles right the way across. And this is the important thing. A lot of the time people spray it, and then they wonder why after a couple of uses it goes a bit funny. That's because it's not totally mixed. Now we're almost there there with this one okay now for all the spraying work we're going to be doing here we're actually going to be using a 0.2 needle okay which is my standard thing and it's spraying around about 25 psi okay and we're just going to go with okay so that is thoroughly mixed up just like that so what we're going to do is we are just going to for the moment up our air pressure just going to grab something to protect the old cutting mat. In fact, we just switch to my dirty mat, as you can see down here, because it doesn't matter if this one gets caked. Okay, 
And then what we're going to do is, we're just going to pop this in the color cup just to see. Now you say, I've already had this one open, as you can see, but we can put it in. And right off the bat, it actually looks quite a nice color down there, okay? So we're just going to check our flow. And it sprays very nicely, very evenly. And the color on a paper towel looks very nice. No smell at all, which is lovely. Even smelling the product directly like that, I cannot smell anything at all. It doesn't smell any different from anything from Model Air, if you like, from their range like that. So down here we have got, I just want to give this a quick wipe first because it has been lying around for a little bit here. I've got a little bit of plastic card. Just gonna give it a bit of a rub just to get the nasties off. I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit splash of airbrush cleaner. Purely because to say, this has been lying under my desk for God knows how long. So it was probably covered in, you can see dirt and grease and everything else like that. Sorry, camera has a fit. Okay. So what we're gonna do is just try and spray this. So we just check our flow, happy. All we're gonna do is basically just gonna try just to see what we get right off of the bat. And as I say, I haven't adjusted my air pressure. I haven't changed anything on my sort of, you know, airbrush at all. We're just putting this down. And generally that actually looks very, very nice. We're all happy with how that is. What I'm gonna do is just gonna lay down a little bit of color just to see what we get. And generally, don't forget, this isn't primed or anything else. Just gonna put this down as I would anything else. Now I know it's metal on metal and metal, but hopefully you can see, actually that doesn't look too bad at all. Okay, now in testing, I used it on Buster, uh, which is out shot at the moment. Uh, and I just chucked down a coat over him and thought, well, we'll just see what randomly happens. And I have to say that actually has come out really, really nicely. Very difficult to see on white, as I know. But I do have to say, it's got a very nice color to it. I know it's the camera will hate anything with silver, but as you can see, it's got a very nice base on it just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray this section just for the moment with this. I'm just gonna chuck down a coat. We're not doing anything particularly nice or anything else like that. Quite a heavy coat. I'm just gonna leave that for a little bit. Now what I'm gonna try and do is just flood an area just to see what happens. Okay, so we've got a nice huge wet spot and we wanna know how that will dry back. Some of them, they dry back very dry, others dry back extremely cloudy and everything else. But you see, we've not using that much. We're running out down here now, but it's not too bad. Now we're gonna use this for our basis of, for our testing of everything. Okay. So that's pretty good. So our first little test as well, we wanna see is how well this cleans up. So we've got standard airbrush acrylic cleaner. We're just gonna pop that in here, grab my cleaning brush, and we're just gonna whip it around the color cup just to see how well this cleans off with a standard brush. And actually, as you can see, that cleans up really, really nicely. Okay, so then what I tend to do, I always do the tip way then the second one I'll blow through. Okay, and we're just gonna hoove this through. And it cleans up extremely well. No nasties or anything else, just like that. Actually, that works really, really well. Quick white brand inside, as you can see. So that does clean up well, again, after spraying it. There is no smell in here. Got a slight bit of hover, but we obviously we are spraying and dumping and everything else like that. So from that point of view, it actually works extremely well. So from a usage point of view, very happy with that. It cleans up, it goes down, and it's no problem at all. Okay, so we're just cleaning that down here. Okay. And then what we're going to do is just come back and see how this is drying. So like bearing in mind, I had a little bit of wet on my finger there. Very smooth, no problem with that at all. The wet area looks like it's got a little bit of rippling in it. You might be able to see, you can catch it on the close up, you can catch it in the right thing. I know the camera hates anything reflective. 
But also, just generally looking at it, if you catch it, it has got a very nice aluminium colour, for want of a better word. No, that seems a bit silly, but it actually does. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to have a go with all the different colours, just to see what we get. Uh, off of these things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up all, the, all these colours, get them all so they're working really, really nice. I'm going to get Buster out and uh, we're going to do a few little tests with him. Okay, so this is Buster. Uh, Buster got painted a couple of days ago just to see what this stuff was like. And I just chucked down a rubbish coat straight of this stuff, of the aluminium, right over this guy, just like this, just on the tail, just because I wanted to see what it was like. And I have to say, I was very impressed at the time. Now, there's a couple of things I haven't done. First of all, we haven't tried to mask it. Okay, so we've got some normal Tamiya tape here, and this is something we've done to all of our models. Okay, so we're just gonna put it on, and we're gonna try the normal peel test, and unfortunately, it's ripped it off. So I'm, yeah, I'm thinking this isn't quite the uh, peelable and everything else, but that was a heavy rip test. So if we just try it on a, a softer case, shall we say, bearing in mind, I haven't tried to knock anything off, but if you were just using it normally, a little bit of peel there again, okay. If we just try it down here, I'm gonna knock some off as I normally would. Don't forget, this is the this more extreme side of it, if you like, okay. And it would probably be fine. If you're gonna mask over it, I think it'd be fine. It's just that when we do this test, this is brand new tape. I rub it on very hard and then we go through it. Just try it as a normal following a panel line. That's roughly how I'd put it down and then we're just gonna peel it away. As you can see, it rips, it peels. That is your only trouble with metallics. They are extremely fragile and they will pull through, okay? I've yet to find one now that doesn't, okay? All of them will, but again, we'll just try it Back of the hand, this is how I would normally use it. Okay, and then we'd put it down on here. Okay, and then just gently peeling, and we are fine, no problem at all. Let's try that again. Pick another panel. Okay, and then gently peeling, and I think you'll be fine. Minimal pickup, we've got a little bit of silvering we're picking up on the tape side of it, but again, I don't think you would gonna call it problem okay and the other thing as well I've just taped over that and I've got no residue left behind okay so it's not like it's picked up a layer of it and moved on now this has been down here for around about sort of 72 hours now since I first put it down on there and it seems to be absolutely fine with that as I say the quick push down and rip test and that's what I'm doing I'm literally ripping it off as fast as I can obviously not very nice okay so what we're going to do we're just going to run buster front to back using the different colors so we can have a look at them and see exactly what we've got. So the first one up we're gonna start with is the old um, Doral aluminium or however you pronounce it. Okay, so not gonna need much in here, it's just a few drops. And we're gonna do the front end of Buster. Okay, we just check our flow coming through nicely. And what we're gonna do is just gonna draw And okay, forget about the, the look of it and all the rest of it. This is just to see if it goes down, how well it covers. And I have to say, very impressed. Very easy to use. It covers extremely well. Okay, and there's that color on the front there. And again, they all seem to have that sort of prismatic color, okay? Let's empty off the last of that. Okay, so straight off the bat, looking at that one, as you can see, it's got a real nice lustful type of color to that. That is actually a really nice color. All right, so then we do a quick dump and go color change. So we just do that. Just blow it through. Okay, now we're going to try the old magnesium. Okay, which is quite a dark colour if it follows its protocol. Okay, so it should be crikey, that is a beautiful colour. Okay, so we're going to do this one. We're going to go up to here on this one. How many colours we got? Just work out how much room we need. Okay. 
Oh, this is a lovely colour. Really nice. Sprays very nicely. Great coverage as well. This covers in one, no problem at all. Okay. And as you can see, it is a really nice colour on this one. All the way over. Okay, now this down here, I wouldn't take too much notice of it. It's purely because it's had a wash over it as well. On that side. But we can onto this side, which is the more important one. And that is a really, really nice colour. And I'm overcoating really heavily here just to use it up, but I'll just blow that out. <clears throat> so again, we'll just dry this back. We we'll just do a quick colour change whilst we're waiting for that to dry. Looks to be a very nice colour. Okay, just a quick dump change. Okay. But again, you can see the, the sort of the way that the colour works. Different lights catch it. Say we've got multiple studio lights down on here, and you can see how it's catching it in different ways. Really easy to spray. You can chuck this stuff down. It's a little bit wet on the underside still. If we dry this down. Hopefully it'll just blend in. But you can see that front portion really bright vibrant color also the thing i'm noticing is as well as this dries totally there is no real fleck to it and when i say the fleck it's those metal particles that you get actually in the paint okay so that was magnesium just trying to make sure we keep them all right all right so now we're going to come in now with steel which is going to be another okay just check our flow there. So this is steel. So a slightly lighter shade. Again, really nice coverage. Easy coverage as well. So I don't know how it's going to work up in this area. And hopefully you can see I'm not babysitting the paint as we were calling it. I'm literally just coming in, putting down a heavy coat. And say so this side I wouldn't take any notice of because it's got other things on it. But again, really nice deep colour. Very similar to the magnesium, but the magnesium, now it's drying, has a slightly different hue to it. As you can probably see. But as these colours are drying, they're drying very, really, very nice. Now, as you say, bust is horrible and it's not a nice, perfect situation for this to be on. I'm just going to use up this colour on here because it is fantastic. how that goes. Okay, we'll do a quick dump. Okay, again, in with a quick colour change. All of these colours are working absolutely flawlessly. No problem with any of them at all. Very easy colour clean out as well. I'm not noticing any fleck or anything sort of cover being sort of pulled through. Okay, so now we've got the dark aluminium or aluminum, depending where you are in the world. Okay. All right, so again, flow. Okay. So really nice. Over, good coverage. No problem with that at all. Again, 
no problem with that colour at all. Goes down really nicely. And hopefully you can see this now, as this is all drying out, it's actually drying very, very smooth. Any flecks and stuff that you might have are now going, okay? So that's really nice, all of those. Okay, couple of drops just down in here. Just blow that out, that's empty. Okay, so that's the dark aluminium. Now this is the dull aluminium. A bit too much there. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to go down in this wheel well with this because we can. It'll be a test for it as well. Again, a very nice, very strong colour. Considering it's supposed to be uh, a dull aluminium, it looks quite strong. Easy to spray. This one actually is a lovely colour. It's far more easy to spray than the others. It's no problem putting it into a wheel well. You don't have to worry about flooding it or anything. Works very, very well. The top of this one. I do like the colour. Put it there. Pop a bit of smoke over. Okay, we're just going to try and flood an area just to see what type of effect we get with this. And I have to say, that is absolutely fantastic. I love that. That's actually worked better than I thought. If you was to put this onto a mirror surface, I think you would have really amazing results. So this one here definitely prefers to be on a thicker coat. And just for argument's sake, just to show how much well this can cover, and if you've got a lot of it, we're just going to do that engine as well. That is a beautiful effect. In fact, that has to be my colour of choice at the moment because that has covered and given me the best metal looking colour so far in this test. Okay, so we're just going to give this a clean out. Back down in here. Do a dump. Okay. Funny enough, if you look in the colour cut, you see like a grey. I'm wondering if they just cut the metallic with a grey to give it a more dull look to the actual aluminium or the aluminium effect itself to dull it down because I haven't noticed this grey colour in the colour cut with any other test we've done. Okay, but there we go. That was dull aluminium. When you look at it, it almost looks grey as well. So very much strange. Okay, let's have a go with chrome. Chrome, as we know, is it's finicky, shall we say, at the best of times. Um, it's one of those colours where, quite frankly, uh, unless you're some type of master at metalwork and all the rest of it, to try and do chrome and make it look like chrome is never going to work. You're far better off using other systems like bare metal foil and stuff like that. But certainly from you know a point of view of paint airbrushing it, chrome is always going to be a very good silver. Okay. So let's see how good, all right? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna work out where we were. We're gonna be to about here. And really, we can put this up against those other colors because we wanna see exactly what we can get. Again, this one seems to have a very fine pigment. You might be able to see it on here, which probably doesn't lend itself to airbrushing at higher pressures. I think it's probably gonna be better at lower air pressure Okay, but we're just going to run this over just to see how we go. I'm just trying it different ways. This side's getting a far heavier coat, and we're going to see how well it self levels as opposed to this one getting a light coat. And to be honest, being chrome, as you'd expect, we're a little bit more airborne in here, and certainly I've got um, run out of paint, all right? So we just give that a second just to dry out again. Quick color change. And this is the nice thing about acrylics. Clean out, you know, I'm cleaning the airbrush here between coats. No smell, no nasties, no nothing. 
and quite frankly the airbrush is coming out crystal clear each time okay so the last one we've got up here is the uh, exhaust manifold which has a, a slightly copper fleck to it okay so we're gonna put a bit of that in there and you might see it in there it's actually a funny old color that one all right so let's see how that's coming through now can we handle this we can so we can handle the other side so what we're going to do is we're just going to pick an area here actually that's quite a good color okay let's take it up Okay, so here we're going to flood just to see what happens when you put down too much. Just to see if it does self-level and all the things like that. Down here would be a little bit more gentle with it. Okay, then we're just going to flip this guy over. Okay. And then up under here. Now we can see the reaction between the two paints. I don't know how well you can see it there. This is because the chrome isn't totally cured and it's affecting the next color. Now we haven't had that with any of the others. Okay. Again, just for argument's sake, we're gonna flood the tail as if we've gone totally over the top, just to see if it will level. And we're gonna flood down here just because I can. All right, now this up here, to be honest, I'm holding it and it is quite tacky in the hands and I'm getting silver on my hands, all right? But from a point of view of everything else, we are all okay with it, all right? So what we can do is we'll have a quick color clean out. Now it does say about overcoating, allow one hour between overcoats. And then it does say about obviously um, before when you're using the varnish to give it 12 hours uh, and all those usual things, I'm far happier from my point of view, to be leaving it an hour between coats of paint instead of doing like we've done just here. All right, but what I do like is this clean out. The clean out is absolutely beautiful on this one. Okay, and there we have it all done. So we can see all those colors down there. So at the front here, this color here, I really do like. That is a lovely color. That is that Dura aluminium. Okay, next up, we've got this one in here, which again, looks like it to me, that's magnesium. That's a really nice one. This strong color up here is steel. So as you say, it's with steel. Um, then we've got dark aluminium in this section here, which I suppose really when you're comparing it from back here, it is a darker shade of the two. Okay, and then you've got this color here, which is absolutely fantastic, which is still wet where I flooded it. Okay, but down here we've got, this is the uh, dull aluminium, which is a great looking color. If you see this patch here, that is absolutely phenomenal it is fantastic down in here we've got our chrome okay so chrome itself you know again as i say i always think chrome looks like more like aluminium okay manifold actually i think that's actually a really nice color that's actually a very nice exhaust pipe stroke manifold color it is a good one and then back here we've got our old favorite we obviously is aluminium okay so from my point of view this first color of the dura aluminium I like the magnesium. To be honest, I like them all. It's just forget chrome. Chrome's a bit of a no-no, and the difference between the aluminiums isn't a lot. But this dull aluminium is more like a chrome to me because that has come out absolutely fantastic. But as you can see, when you catch all of this in the light, it's very prismatic, as in you catch it in those different lights, you get the different colors. Obviously, we've got LED lighting above us, uh, which does weirdo things with the camera. But you can see we do have that very nice different shades of blues and pinks and everything else coming off where it's refracting in the light. Okay, so from a point of view of airbrushing this stuff, yes, it's lovely. It's easy, I, fantastic with the smell and everything else. Does it give a good metal effect? Definitely, this stuff is the best metal finish I've seen um, on an acrylic form, okay? Okay, there is the thing with the Games Workshop, their stuff is really good. If you thin it enough, you can airbrush it and it does come out. But actually, down here, I'm looking at the top of this here and that looks to be extremely nice, very smooth and almost, and I'm gonna use that word of almost, on par with things like the lacquer-based ones. Now, the lacquer-based ones, by their nature, they have a finer pigment. That pigment enables it to lay flatter, which gives you a more metallic look to it. But from my point of view, 
some of these colors here, like to be honest, this magnesium has a very fine fleck to it. So to be honest as the steel, they are two fantastic colors, very nice. You got quite a bit of fleck in these lighter silver colors, obviously like the aluminiums and stuff like that. But generally, I think these are the best of the acrylics, shall we say. Put this up against something like XF16. XF16 is horrible, okay? It just doesn't work. The fleck is so big and heavy, it's like having sheets of metal down on there. It just doesn't work. Tamiya's chrome as well. Okay, it's great for little bits of hand painting, but you wouldn't want to do it anywhere else, okay? So from that point of view, these are fantastic. Then we're on to, obviously, Vallejo Model Air, which this stuff is technically replacing. It was horrible. It's almost impossible to spray this stuff. It just loves to run down. The fleck, again, the pigment in it is so heavy. It's so dense. You can almost see streams of it running out. So it's not very good from that point of view. So from my point, this is absolutely amazing. I ditched all my metallic range of model of uh, model airs a long time ago, purely because they are horrible. But these actually, I must admit, are really, really nice. If you're in the market for acrylics, then you definitely want to use this. So our last little thing here, and this was why this guy is here, is I want to hand paint these. Now, hand painting with these types of paints is notoriously difficult. Okay, I'm just going to pick a couple of the ones I really like. Okay, so we're going to do this and we want the dull. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a nice brush. In fact, I'm going to grab a really nice brush if I can find it. Uh, uh, uh. That's the one we want. I'm actually going to use the legendary Windsor uh, Newton Series 7 brush on this. Okay, so we're going to do it the same way as we did before. So, what do we have first? We have the Dura Aluminium. So, these I say the great thing is you can unscrew the top. Okay, so I'm hoping down in here we can get some of the paint. And I just want to see what happens if we hand paint this actually on okay just because I'm wondering if they are hand paintable and all things like that now the thing we haven't tried is buffing okay that works really well I can't connect at the moment try again in a little bit sorry Windows 10 don't you just love it uh, so that is actually self leveling you might be able to see down there and it's actually giving us a really nice smooth look even though I've just literally plastered that on so that one's worked really well okay it looks like it's actually got a self leveling property into this one okay next up we're going to try is this magnesium which we did like okay okay and again this is totally brushable it's not like it's just water and running away. It's thin, but it is very, very usable. Okay, so we're just gonna come in. And bearing in mind this, what I'm painting on has been handled. It's got oils, grease, and everything all over it. Okay, so that's no problem with that guy. Okay, and then we're going to come in with steel. Okay, another great colour. And also when you brush them over each other, they don't automatically bleed in. So you can take them right up to each other. You might notice there, it hates this surface because it's oily and horrible. Okay, really nice coverage there. And then what we're gonna do now, it's just gonna try this dual aluminium. Now you can see this stuff, it looks like there's gray mixed in with the color, which would explain everything. But it did go down extremely well. And again, it, here it's covering extremely well. Okay, now we have got bubbles in here and all the good stuff. Okay, so it's just a point of view to seeing how this works, how it dries out, how it levels, and everything else like that. Okay, so that what I'm going to do now 
is we're going to let these dry off for you know around about half an hour to an hour and then we're going to come back and we're going to try and buff them because we're not sure if you can even buff them or not what does happen when you rub them and then what we're going to do is overcoat it with their varnish and see if the actual color changes at all okay so we've been an hour or so since we've done this one and as you can see down here this is the brush painted it's very nice, it's self-leveled, it's smooth. This one over here, which if I remember was our uh, Dahl um, or Dur aluminium, looking very nice. The others, pretty much okay. This one over here, which uh, I can't remember which one it was now, I think that was our dull aluminium, or, uh, is actually a little bit brush painty. Probably not the best, but the other two, no problems at all. Okay, so what I'm gonna try now is actually see how much we can get off. So I'm just gonna use a, a buffing cloth. All right, we're going to do it on the main one over here. And we want to know if we can change the sheen on any of this by buffing it. And we want to know how much comes off. So we've got minimal actually coming off of this, but it does seem to buff and blend quite nicely. Now we're just going to buff and blend over everything just to see if we can, what we can get off of this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. It's just going to use a little bit of bounty okay and it seems it's hard as nails we're getting minimal amount coming off this is a lot more textured but as you can see you can actually buff this up which is great actually really well you can and uh, hopefully you can see that that is buffed up beautifully i can feel it as i'm rubbing it changing it as you go and it's given a really nice look to it it's still very flat don't get me wrong but pretty good so we're just gonna see we're getting minimal amounts coming off it is coming off but you'd get that with any type of metallic paint so you can lightly buff this up as you would with any other metalizer we've scratched this one a little bit on its sides but i'm really giving this some beans now because i want to know if we can go through it but you might be able to see this guy down here is buffing up an absolute treat. Now I'm really rubbing this as hard as I can, trying to wear through, and we're just getting some burn through now. You can probably see this tearing at the top. That's where we're physically rubbing through it. And to be honest, I was rubbing that as hard as possible. So it has got great grip capabilities. Now what we want to know is, is obviously masking this. So I'm going to do this in the real world. We're not going to try and rip it off just by using normal. So I'm going to put it on the back of my hand because we want to know if this is going to leave marks behind. So the areas where we're going to see this most is probably, well, we're going to just try a couple of different areas. Okay, so we've put this on, peeling it off. Okay, and we're getting no residue. Hopefully you can see that. We've got no residue on the inside of the tape at all. Now, if we'd done that traditionally on anybody else's, you would have silver tape now. Now, is this because we've rubbed it? I'm not sure, but definitely we're looking pretty good and we've got no peel off at all with this, at all. Actually, this is really holding on very heavy. I'm rubbing that down very hard and peeling. You can see we're getting no silverness on the back of this. Now, we've just done that in multiple areas. Hopefully you can see We've got minimal, in fact, hardly, in fact, I'm thinking the shininess on that is probably not even silver. I think that's probably more glue on the back of the tape. So absolutely fantastic. And then hopefully you can see some real nice colors, very strong, very vibrant colors all over this. Right, next up, we're just gonna try its gloss. And so what we're gonna do is just put this direct straight in here. Okay. So just make sure it's totally clear. I'm gonna come in. Now I haven't used this before. I'm believing you can use it neat, having never used it. So I'm gonna do, do it on the blind side. Okay, not gonna change anything. We're just gonna see what happens, okay? So we're just trying to see if we can change the sheen. Actually, that smells really nice, as horrible as that sounds. Now this is a gloss. And we're just trying to see if we can change anything. So we're going in really heavy now. In fact, I'm going to flood this 
to see if it self levels. Do you know, it actually smells of perfume. It's probably the nicest smell that's been in this studio in an absolute age. Right, so as you can see, looking pretty good, okay? So what I'm going to do is literally gonna leave this for around about 10 minutes, something else like that, and then we're gonna come back, have final thoughts, final reveal, and we're gonna see if it's changed it at all. Okay, so there we go. Um, still a little bit wet, it is touch dry, but this gloss, I probably flooded it a little bit too much, and I stuck my finger in it, which just shows it is slightly self levering because my fingerprint is disappearing. But hopefully you can see, if anything, I know it sounds a little bit weird, it seems to have added another dimension. It's probably just the shininess reflecting with the lights and everything else. But this is our raw state, okay? Just like this, all right? And then this is our glossed state. So you can see everything's a lot more shiny uh, and everything else like that. But it doesn't seem to have detracted from the surface. Now don't forget, this is the bad side because this had oil on it and the horribles. Um, but just from a gloss point of view, it has gone on very nicely. Now I'm not thinking, you know, gloss always affects any metalizer paints, including acrylics, but it does seem to adhere better, especially up here around the, the nose, you can probably see. This is it, normal. And then over here we've got the glossed. It does give it a more glossy look to it, um, and not metal if you like. It looks like it is a gloss on top of metal. So from that point of view, it does work. It doesn't detract from the metal finish. So what I'm saying by this is, this particular stuff, not only does it smell extremely nice, it's not like if you were just to put on a coat of future and you lose glossy luster metal, it just kills it completely. It's definitely a lot better. But I do have to say, um, and I'm being honest here, these are great. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan of acrylic metalizer effect paints. I just don't think they work. But I'm gonna change my mind. Not for all of them, but definitely, uh, we spoke about it before. The aluminium is sort of, you know, yeah, samey, samey. The dull aluminium, the steel, the magnesium are beautiful colors. They are really, really nice. Chrome, again, to be honest, I don't think the chrome works, but definitely if I was gonna be doing this, I would probably go with aluminium, dark aluminium, and the dull aluminium, and the Dura uh, uh, aluminium as well. No problem at all. So if I was probably onto this one, the exhaust manifold, again, it's a very nice color. I quite like that, that works quite well. But genuinely, I think the aluminium, yeah, samey, samey, and chrome, I wouldn't worry about. So from my point of view, I will be using these, will be my new go-to paints for smaller jobs. Okay, and by that I mean, if I needed something to be metal color, I probably would. For example, um, we've been doing the bike recently just off here and we got the exhaust system actually i would have liked to have done that i made this sort of hybrid color up myself i would probably want to do it in this manifold color i think it would look really really well but what i'm saying is when you compare this type of metal effect which is obviously ak stuff to this it's no comparison this has a massive gold uh, golden luster you can see the different colors on here. This is where a true metalizer is worth its weight because the pigment is non-existent in here. You can't see any graininess, but in here you can see a slight graininess and that is the trouble with an acrylic. With an acrylic, with the medium it is, it's not got like a hot lacquer uh, base behind it that is giving you a beautiful, very fine pigment onto this. This needs to work a little bit harder. So consequently, you're not gonna quite get it here. Is it far away? Not really. I think if you didn't know, and I was to spray this engine again, I think you'd get away. It's just this has a certain metal luster to it that you're only really gonna get with a metalizer on a lacquer-based one. But as an alternative, I think if you didn't put them side by side, you'd be very hard pressed to tell the difference. So definitely the new uh, Vallejo Life Color acrylic metal color paints actually get a big thumbs up for me. I really do like them. They're gonna be now a stable part of my system. I've changed it all completely. So what I'm gonna be using is these for all my sort of smaller jobs, things like that, things that don't gonna really matter in here i'm going to use my ak's for anything that i want as a showpiece for things like engines stuff like that and everything else like that so i do think they complement each other really really well brush painting is the only downside i think yeah these aren't really a brush paint i would probably use then my buffable series and things like that purely for hand painting and then i'll use these and the ak range certainly for my new way of doing metal colors so there we go that is vallejo metal color go and get some <laughs>